Baffin Island, remote, vast, inhospitable. Who in their right mind would willingly take on the fifth largest island on Earth? Isolation, harsh terrain, and punishing weather is the norm. So when we at Scott Woods Transport were asked to move seven steel tanks, each 34 feet in diameter and 40 feet tall, weighing in at 80,000 pounds each, we were confident we could get it done. The journey started in Cornwall, Ontario, and ended 100 kilometers inland on the northern stretch of Baffin Island, 3,300 kilometers full of obstacles and peril. The distance itself was daunting, but adding the harsh conditions and a short three-week delivery window made this project not for the faint of heart. But the biggest challenge was the pressure to meet the client's deadline, the fine line between success and failure, the difference between delivering the equipment to supply the region with its only source of energy, or our client needing to shut down their operations for a full eight months. The success of this project lay completely in our ability to plan for every eventuality in this remote part of the world, an area completely uninhabited. No hotels, fuel stations, or truck dealers close by, the closest convenience store being over 1,000 kilometers away and only accessible by plane. If we missed even one small vital detail, it would place the entire operation in jeopardy. Given the unpredictable nature of the Arctic, a planning trip was scheduled to survey the area and gather as much information as possible to prepare us for this journey and help us fully understand what we'd be up against. The planning excursion revealed shocking realities. Armed with this information, plans were developed, tested and refined for the execution phase of the project. Finally, the equipment selected was determined by its ability to deliver the best combination of reliability, performance and flexibility in the face of the elements. With only six weeks lead time, we planned, procured and shipped everything we could possibly need to be completely self-reliant. Once all the preparations were complete, we were off. When zero hour hit, it was time to move. The first step was moving the tanks from the manufacturing facility in Cornwall traveling on regular roads to the port where the ship awaited its cargo. Since there are no direct roads to Baffin Island, the tanks, tractors, trailers and all necessary equipment were loaded onto a marine cargo ship for transport. Meanwhile, our team made the 3,300 kilometer trip taking three different planes and ultimately landing on a rugged dirt runway in a small private plane. Now here's where the rubber hit the road, so to speak. We had a tight three-week window in which to complete the task, or risk having our trucks and trailers landlocked until the ice thawed the following June. Time and the weather were against us, but our precise planning could keep the odds on our side. Day one was a dry run for our crew, running the route empty, addressing predefined issues from the planning visit, identifying any new issues when they arose, and formulating the necessary operational modifications required for a successful trip. Day two was the real deal. The moment the wheels started rolling off the beach, we were on, 100% committed to the task at hand, to face whatever the Arctic threw at us. Our crew was on their own, no shelter, no outside support, and no turning back. The first load was transported from beachhead to the final destination over kilometers of rough stone roads. Our first challenge was negotiating the e-container bridges that we had to cross. These bridges are only 12 feet wide with three foot high guardrails. To cross with a 34 foot wide load, we had to stop before each bridge, hydraulically raise the deck three feet to clear the bridge, travel very slowly across the bridge, and lower the trailer back down to normal operating height on the other side to continue with the load. With one bridge down, there were only four more to go until we arrived at our destination. Although the load left under reasonable weather conditions with only a couple of hours of travel under our belt, the weather took a drastic turn for the worse and we found ourselves in the middle of a blinding snowstorm. Visibility was virtually zero, traction was reduced to dangerous levels, and the high winds were placing significant lateral forces on the 40-foot tall load. Turning around and heading back to base camp to ride out the storm wasn't an option. We had to press on. 
Fortunately, our planning paid off and we put our action plan in place. Tire chains were installed, speeds were reduced to a crawling pace, and a loader was hooked up to the unit to assist in managing the steep grades. It ultimately took 12 hours to negotiate the 100-kilometer trek, with vast distances being walked by our team alongside the load to ensure that the driver had eyes on both the load and road from every possible vantage point. After 35 days and 1,920 man-hours and 3,300 kilometers, each load was delivered in pristine condition with no recordable incidents and accidents during the entire operation. We were deemed to have left zero impact on the landscape, being respectful of the rich Inuit heritage and their traditional protection of the earth. We rose to the occasion, the diverse talents, years of experience and precision pre-planning, meeting our client's mandate, delivering the goods as requested, without incidents, on time, on budget and damage free. No matter the distance, terrain or weather conditions, if it needs to be moved, we at Scott Woods Transport have what it takes to get it done, even if it means going to the ends of the earth to satisfy our clients' needs. That's where we'd go.